So it's been about three years since I've created a video on my DIY self-watering planter. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But since I've created that video, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of comments asking questions and just coming up with other ways to do things. So I thought today I'd make a video with the most frequently asked questions and some other tips and tricks along the way to create your own self-watering planter at home. My name is Amy and over at Pretty Purple Door, I help home gardeners create landscapes that are uniquely you. And I would really recommend that you watch the other video first so you kind of know the gist of how this planter is made. And then you can come back and get all your questions answered in this video. Okay, so the first comment that I get, I get this a lot, that this is way too complicated and the process that I'm giving isn't simple. My suggestion to you, if you think this is too complicated, that you should just buy a self-watering planter. They sell these in any of the plant nurseries, any of the big box stores, you can buy your own self-watering planter. I have an example here of a smaller version of it. It will just come, it'll usually say self-watering on it and then it'll come with a little reservoir underneath and you can fill this with water and then you have oop, <laughs> and then you have a self-watering planter. So if you think it's too complex, then you can just buy one. But I'd recommend going back to that other video and just watching it closely. There's really only a couple different pieces to this and it's the simplest way that I've come up with to do this. So I think that if you follow along with the video, you'll do just fine. There's also inserts that you can buy. So I'll leave a link to one of those in the description below where you can buy the water reservoir insert for your container and just use that. There's only one or two out there that I've seen and a lot of them don't work with different size planters. So just watch the dimensions for that and make sure that the planter that you're using can accommodate that water reservoir that people are selling. Another question I get a lot is in the original video, what is the size of the planter and the rubber round part I was using? So here's my planter here. The top of it is 16 inches and the rubber feed bowl is a 14 inch diameter in size. The actual container that I'm using here and that I used in the other video isn't available anymore. And again, I would suggest if you're just gonna go out and buy exactly what I've purchased, you might as well go out and buy a self-watering planter that's already self-watering so you don't have to go through the process of this. The reason that I've done this is to have a solution for creating a self-watering planter out of a planter that you really like that isn't self-watering or just to save money out of materials that you probably have at home or that you can get really cheaply. So if you're gonna go out and purchase a planter anyway, you might as well just buy a self-watering planter. And I'll also leave a link in the description below to the article that I wrote about this whole setup. And in that article, there are a bunch of different self-watering planters that I suggest and recommend on that page so you can click through to see those as well. Okay, next up is moisture levels. I got a lot of questions about moisture levels, so I'm gonna go over some of the top questions here. Is there a risk of overwatering the plants with this system? How can one ensure proper drainage and avoid waterlogged soil? So yes, absolutely, there is a risk of overwatering your plants with this system. To avoid this, what I would recommend that you do is you can, you can kind of mess with the amount of holes that you're putting in your solo cup. So that will determine about how much water is getting into your planter. So what I would do is I'd poke a couple holes into the, the solo cup. I use just a little poker like this and I poke a couple holes and then I'd set up the whole planter and I'd put the soil in I'd fill it with water and then I would wait, wait a day or two and make sure that the soil is moist and it's not waterlogged, it's not overwatered. If it's getting too much moisture, you might need to either pank in the wicking material a lot harder so that it doesn't release as much water or you may need to try again with another cup and poke less holes. Or if it's not getting enough water at all, you might need to poke a bunch more holes into this. So before you actually plant into the planter, I'd recommend setting the whole thing up and then just waiting a day or two to make sure that the moisture level is appropriate for the plants that you want to put into that planter. Next question, what about root rot? Since the soil is sitting in water, won't it rot the roots? No, the soil doesn't sit in the water, so the, the planter is separated. So there would be space for the water underneath and then the the actual soil sits inside of this or on top of this inside of a bag or some other material. So the soil isn't actually sitting in water, it's above the water. The only thing that is sitting in water is the solo cup with the wicking medium in it. 
and then that is touching the bottom of the soil and the plants are taking the water as needed. It's not going to rot the roots of the plant because the plant roots aren't touching the water. They're not sitting in water. They don't have wet feet. Somebody asked, they have a reservoir that isn't reducing after a week. That means that either the wicking medium that you're putting inside of the cup isn't working properly or you don't have enough holes poked. So before, again, before you plant any plants in there, I would make sure that you give it a test for a couple days so that you don't run into that problem and then have to unplant everything that you put into the container. Another question, does this keep the soil moist or wet? I need to maintain the right moisture level for my plants. Yes, it'll keep it moist. And again, you can control the moisture using the holes in this. Won't the dirt in the cup rot and stink given that the dirt is sitting in the reservoir of water? I've been doing this for at least five years now. I've never had an issue with a smell from the dirt getting wet. So I would say no. If, if it does smell, if there is a problem with the smell, likely something is wrong. It's pulling up too much moisture or something like that. But you can leave a comment below if you've had an issue with the smell, but I've been doing it five years in the same method that I showed in that video and I haven't had any problems with the smell. Okay, the next question is about the false bottom, which is the screen that I'm putting into the bottom of the planter. So I made a little stand like so, and then I put a screen on top of it. And somebody is asking for the bottom where you're using a screen slash hardware cloth, can I use something else like wood chips? I've had people ask, can I use sticks? Can I use straw? Can I use burlap? Can I use landscape fabric, etc.? For the screen itself, you would need some kind of screen or something flat that the soil can sit on top of. The reason I use this is because I had it on hand and because it's easy to cut a hole into it for the wick. I guess you could use on top of this, wood chips, sticks, straw, burlap, landscape fabric. Yeah, I think you could use a lot of those items. I wouldn't do straw because it's going to kind of degrade in here. I, I don't know. I'm not sure why you would do that. I think you should just use a bag of some kind. I use a garbage bag, but you could also use like a burlap or a landscape fabric or something like that. But you can try anything you'd like. This is just the way that I've done it. So I'm sure there's other ways to do it too. And if you do try it and it works, let us know in the comments below. Another question about the plastic bag. So I put the soil into a plastic bag, into just a garbage bag like so. And then this will sit on top of that screen and the wick comes into the bag and the soil is actually inside of the bag. So somebody's asking, isn't the plastic garbage bag toxic? Will this affect the growth of my plants? Absolutely not. It doesn't affect my plants at all. I plant all kinds of things in this, but I'm not planting anything that I'm going to eat. So I wouldn't worry about the effects of the plastic on the soil since it's a contained space. You can just get rid of the soil at the end of the year. If you are going to actually use the self-watering option for food. I would definitely recommend using a food grade material, probably not a garbage bag. Maybe you can try landscape fabric or burlap, or maybe a grow bag inside of here that would be safe for growing food. Personally, I wouldn't use the plastic if I were going to be eating food outside of this, but I'm just using it for ornamental purposes. Okay, I get a lot of questions about the wicking system and how it works. Can you provide more details on that? So yes, absolutely. I use two cups put together and then I poke holes into these solo cups and I use a little poker and I'll just poke holes throughout like so. So what this does after I have the holes poked is I fill this with soil and this sits into the water reservoir that's underneath the planter. And what it does is it pulls the water into this container, which is filled with just, I just use plain soil. So the soil acts as a wick, it absorbs the water and the soil will only absorb so much water after it's completely saturated with water, it's not going to suck more water in. So what happens is when this is filled with dirt and then the dirt is touching your whole container of soil above, the plants are pulling the water from this area. As the roots are grabbing the water to drink, this gets less saturated and then it absorbs more water from underneath. So it's really just a system that I'm using to get the water from below the plants to the potting mix that I'm using. And there are lots of other options for this. This is just what I've used, again, of really simple, cheap materials that I had at home. And I've been doing it for at least five years now. It's worked every year for me. So if it's not broken, I don't fix it. 
but there are other options. I've seen self-watering planters that use what's called a capillary mat. So it's just basically, here's a piece of capillary mat here, and it's basically just kind of a sponge material. And they'll take a piece of that and instead of having this entire solo cup situation, you wouldn't have any of this. You would just put the piece of capillary mat into the water and then the other half of it would be into the soil. And th this acts in the same way where this would absorb the water and pull it up into the area where your plants are into that potting mix. So you could try a capillary mat. I've seen other people use a synthetic yarn. I tried this, I tried it two years ago. It pulled up so much water into my pot that it waterlogged and killed my plants. So I can't personally recommend that, but I've seen it used a lot, or I've seen people at least talking about using it. I don't know if they've actually tested it or not, but if you're feeling a little adventurous and you wanna test out the synthetic yarn and you have it at home, give that a try. Again, I would do that and wait a day or two just to see how much moisture is collecting inside of your potting mix so that you don't kill your plants like I did. What materials do you recommend using for the wick? Are there any specific types of fabric or materials that work best like cotton string, capillary mat, lava rock, sand, etc.? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of people in the comments saying they didn't wanna use the dirt and what else would I recommend? Well, this is what I've used for five years and it's worked and it's dirt, so anybody has access to it. So I'd really just recommend sticking with what I'm telling you in the other video, but by all means, if you wanna try other things, like I said, I've tried the nylon string before. It didn't work for me. I didn't, it made the soil too wet. Somebody said sand. I wouldn't recommend the sand because I think that that would also pull too much moisture into the area with the potting mix. So you can try those other things, but this is what's worked for me and it's worked for me for five years. So take that for what it's worth and experiment as you see fit okay will your solo cups leach sand out into your reservoir over time no i haven't had that experience the holes i poke are very small as you can as you can see i'm just using this little pick and tiny little holes the soil isn't pouring out into the reservoir another question does the soil in the cup touch the planter soil and is that enough to transfer water to the entire planter yes that's why i say to mound up the soil in the cup and then when you position the cup inside of the water reservoir it's mounded up and that mound of soil is absolutely a hundred percent touching the soil in the rest of the container that's the wick it's wicking the water from underneath into the soil so it has to touch and there's no way around that that's how it works and that's what a wick does any kind of wick so the same would be for the capillary mat if you just put the capillary mat into the water this would go into the soil part it would have to touch the soil and it just naturally will pull the amount of water it needs to pull how often should the reservoir be filled with water? Is there a general guideline or does it vary depending on the plant's water needs weekly, monthly, how often? Okay, so it would matter a little bit about the types of plants. If you have plants that need a lot of water, they're gonna, obviously gonna take more water in. But I think the biggest consideration for this is how big the water reservoir is in the bottom of your container. So if you have a smaller container with just a small water reservoir, then obviously you're gonna to have to fill that up more often. If you have a large container with a larger reservoir, my reservoir is, you know, a, it's a pretty decent size here. Really in the heat of summer, maybe once a week, and like other seasons, probably two weeks, three weeks. It really just depends on the weather outside, how quickly the plants are drying out and how much water you have. So if you're going on vacation and you need to water your plants for a month and this isn't enough there's nothing you can really do other than make a bigger water reservoir so unfortunately that's that's just how it works okay next question these are all about like modifying it and customizing it to fit your specific needs what if i just put a planter with drain holes inside of a shallow container and water into that will that work as a self-watering system yeah absolutely if you just had a planter and it had the drain holes in the bottom of it and then you put a dish underneath it and filled the dish with water yeah that would work that's what a self-watering planter really is i'm just doing that inside of the container because who wants to have their container in a big old dish and like aesthetically, I don't think that would look very nice. So that's the only reason. But if you were going on vacation or something, you could absolutely put your 
container with drain holes, put it in a big five gallon bucket and set it in there and hope for the best. I, again, I would test it before you go on vacation just to make sure that the plants are getting the appropriate amount of water. If the drain holes are really big, it might pull up too much water. So you'd kind of have to test that and be careful. It would, again, it would just depend on your setup. It would depend on the container you're using and how big the drainage holes in the bottom are. Can the planter be scaled up or down in size? Are there any limitations or adjustments that need to be made for different sizes? Yeah, you can absolutely scale it up or scale it down to fit your needs. I guess the only consideration would be if it's a very, very large planter, maybe you'd want multiple wicks in there so, or bigger holes in, in here to accommodate. Like I said, the, the easiest way to do this is to set, up, set it up exactly as you want to set it up and don't plant anything in it and then let it sit for a day or two and just test and make sure that it's working and the soil is at the moisture level that you need for your plants and adjust accordingly before you actually plant in it. Can this self-watering planter be used for indoor plants as well? Are there any additional considerations for indoor use? Yeah, absolutely you could use it for indoor plants if you have really large indoor plants and you want to do this or you have a really cool planter and you want to do this. Again, they do make self-watering planters if you just have small planters like this these are from dollar general they're not expensive and that would probably solve your issues a lot faster than having to diy your own option but yeah if you do have a specific planter that isn't self-watering that you want to make into a self-watering planter absolutely are there any considerations for outdoor use such as protection from rain or extreme weather yes i do have an overflow drain inside of here let me just move some of this stuff around so right above where the water level is, I did drill holes into the planter here. I did the two on each side of the planter and it's literally right above where the water level is. So when I'm putting the water into the tube to fill the, the bottom hole when I'm pouring it into here, I look at the side of the planter and as the water starts to shoot out of that drain hole that's situated right above the, where I want the water level, once it starts shooting out of there, that's how I know it's full and also that helps if there's excess rain. Now, I have had situations where we've had a really bad downpour and I wasn't home. And one time, because I have the plants inside of a plastic bag and I didn't poke drain holes into the plastic bag, the bag did fill with water. I was able to, when I got home, I just tipped the planter a little bit and drained out the excess water. So it wasn't a real big issue. But if that's something you're concerned about, whatever you use, whether you're using the plastic bag or some other material, you can always poke holes into the bottom of that so that there's extra drainage for your plants in addition to the drain holes on the outside of your planter. And beyond that, if it's going to rain and it's going to be really bad, heavy rain, you can cover your plant with a garbage bag or you can bring it underneath your porch or something. It's not completely 100% hands off, so there might be times where you'd have to actually like accommodate what you need to do with your planter because there's extreme weather. Um, another question, what about mosquitoes breeding in the self-watering planter? How can we prevent that? I've never had that experience. I think because it's kind of underground and it's not exposed to air and it's not sitting out where mosquitoes would breed, I don't think you would have an issue, but I don't live in an area where we have a huge mosquito problems. We have mosquitoes, but I don't have the kind of issues that I've seen some other states have, so I can't really answer that. To my own experience, it hasn't happened. It's not an issue. Are there any specific plants that are more suitable for this self-watering planter design? Yeah, I think you can use it for just about anything. I think if you have succulents in there, you wouldn't really need a self-watering planter unless you were, like I said, going on vacation or something like that because succulents don't require a lot of water and they're okay with drying out in between. So you can make modifications to the system to accommodate what plants you're putting in there but obviously it's a great solution for plants that do take in a lot of water like sweet potato vine i use my super tunias in it so plants that do need a decent amount of water it does really well for what maintenance or care is required for the self-watering planter are there any steps that need to be taken periodically to ensure proper functioning yes like i said every winter i take this whole thing apart so i pull the soil out and i store that or I get rid of it if it's not good anymore. I get rid of the bag, I take everything out, I hose it down, and I store everything away for the winter. So every spring, I put this whole thing back together. I'm not leaving it out for the entire year. 
I would imagine that you could do that for people who live in areas where it's not freezing cold and you don't get to the, the low temperatures that we do here in Pennsylvania. So I'd imagine that it could last a couple years, but I think every so often you'd probably have to pull everything up when you're replenishing the soil and redo your wicking situation and just make sure everything's functioning properly. Can you explain the purpose of the screen and all the other components if they're going to be covered with a garbage bag anyway? It seems unnecessarily complicated. Yeah, I can try to explain this to you. So if you had set up here, this is basically what it's gonna look like without, without the planter in the way. So you'd have your wick inside here and then you'd have your screen above this. And why, like, why do you need all these components? The reason that I use the screen is so that the soil doesn't fall. So if you have the bag and it's filled with soil, and I trim this, I trim this to fit so that it's not visible when it's in my planter, but if you had a bag and it was filled with soil and it was not using a screen, it would just sink down. You see how it's just pushing down? Eventually the weight of the soil inside the bag is going to push down and it's going to completely consume your water reservoir so then you're not going to have a water reservoir anymore because the bag is going to keep sinking so this was just a solution that i thought of to avoid the bag from actually sinking down it's now it's a nice hard surface and it can't sink down the same thing instead of this setup here with the screen and the pvc stand i had another option in that video which is a lot simpler and that is just this rubber thing and if you have that with the solo cup, that's really all you need. And then you put the plant material in here. I still use the plastic bag, but again, this would hold the plastic bag up so that you have this water reservoir here so that the weight of the soil doesn't actually weigh this down and then remove your entire water reservoir. So that's the reason for that. And literally this is the entire setup. It would be a container like this works really well if you have a tapered container so that it can kind of just smush right in there watch the other video to and i'll show you exactly how i did that so you'd have the wick you'd have that and then you'd have the pipe on the side so that you can fill the reservoir underneath with water and that's all it is it's not very complicated and like i said there are a lot of options out there where you can buy your own right out of the box and you don't have to do a diy solution so definitely look into that and check out that other video. I'll leave a link to it here in case you didn't listen to me and you watched this one first. You should definitely go back and watch the whole process so that you can understand exactly how I'm putting this planter together and I'll see you over in the next video.